In this fourth video of my Autolab video series, we're going to look at building the vCenter server for Autolab. So in previous videos, we've configured Workstation, we've populated the build share on the NAS, and we've spun up the domain controller and the ESXi host using the Autolab automation. Um, in this video, we're going to look at building and configuring the vCenter server, or the VC shell VM in Autolab. To start the build, the first thing we need to do is attach the Windows 2008 R2 evaluation ISO to the VC VM in Autolab. And we're just going to edit the settings, go to the CD, DVD uh, for that VM, and just make sure that we are attaching the Windows 2008 R2 um, ISO to the VM and then we can power it on. So the Autolab automation is going to go through and build the vCenter server for us much like it did the domain controller. Um, and this is going to take some time. Uh, it's going to go through a process of installing Windows, um, installing all the prereqs it needs to install, and then finally installing um, vCenter server and its components. Um, so I'm going to pause the video because this will take a little while and I'll be back once the build is finished and we'll walk through finishing the configuration. The Autolab vCenter build has completed and it took about two hours. During that time it installed Windows, it installed all the vCenter components, it installed PowerCLI, it installed vCLI, and, and then just a number of other tools on the desktop. So when the build is finished, it automatically logs you in as VI admin, and on the desktop there is an Autolab script menu, which I've already run. And from this menu, there's a number of things you can do. First, you can validate the server build. This is works very similar to validating the build of the DC or domain controller server. Um, it just goes through and performs a number of checks to make sure that the build completed successfully, and everything is there to make to be able to work with vCenter in the lab. The script's going to take a few minutes to run, so we'll just wait on it here. So when the scripts run, it'll show you if there's any errors. Um, some of them you can ignore. So we're not doing any vCenter 4.1 or 5.0, so none of those installation files are there. And we're not doing 5.1, so since those aren't there, um, that we can ignore those errors. The Windows 2003 sysprep and the Windows XP sysprep, I did not install the Windows uh, XP ISO or the 2003 ISO on the build share. I didn't, didn't want them, uh, at least not for this build. So just, you know, to save room or what have you. So those are okay to ignore. Um, so once we're, we you know, the important thing is that vCenter server is running and, you know, update manager is running in case you want to be able to do updates and that everything got installed as it should have. You know, vCenter 5.1, 5.5, PowerCLI. So we'll get out of this and then we'll go to the build log. The build log just shows you what happened during the automation build of the vCenter server. So you'll see it set the host. The hosts were added automatically and configured. And this is because back in the lab or, or the build share video, we set the automate INI file to auto add the host. And we also set it to build the data stores. Both of these were set to true. So during our build, it built the data stores, it added the host to inventory, and it configured the host. And we'll look at that in just a second. If you had not set the auto INI file up to add the ESXi host to vCenter and, and create the cluster, um, you could use this uh, option number three here, and that would do that. That would build the, that would add the host to vCenter and configure the cluster as, as through the automation scripts. Um, if you're using the router uh, VM, 
Um, you can add a route to the internet so that Vum can download the updates. Um, for this, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that right now. Maybe later during a lab or another video, we will use Vum to update our host. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave the router off and not add uh, the route, just so that Vum doesn't go out and, and continuously try or continuously up, uh, download updates. Um, if you're doing any vCloud Director stuff, uh, Option 5 will inst install the vShield 5.0 and vCloud 1.5. And then Option number 6 is just a way you can use to shut down the lab, to shut down all the host, um, just to help conserve resources if you're not using the lab or what have you. So since the vCenter is built now, we can connect to it with the vSphere client. And I've already done that. I've connected to the environment with the vSphere client. And you'll see the data center's been built, there's a cluster, and the three lab hosts have been added. Now there's also been a great deal of configuration done to each of these lab hosts. If you look at the networking, two vSwitches have been created. One vSwitch with a workstation and servers port group on it, and that is for your virtual machines to connect to. And then another, the first vSwitch has all of your um, VM kernels for IP storage, fault tolerance, vMotion, and management. And this is done on each each host in the environment. And these were these were configured through the automation scripts when the vCenter build was performed. On the storage adapters, you'll notice that the iSCSI uh, software adapter has been enabled and configured. And then with storage, there's several storage uh, or several data stores pre-configured. iSCSI 1 through 3, NFS 1 and 2, and then a local data store. There's also a mount, um, a read-only mount to the build share on the NAS. Um, this way, if you need any of the ISOs that are located on the build share, you can get to those very easily from within the environment. So the three hosts are configured. They've been added to a cluster. On the cluster, um, DRS and HA are enabled. So you can just, from here, you can start working through labs. You can also connect to the environment using the web client. Um, it is installed on the vCenter server and, you know, as a prereq. It has to be for single sign-on and some of the other, to be able to administer single sign-on and to use some of the newer features in 5.5 um, but it is installed and you're able to manage the environment from the web client also and we'll just go through and look real quick at just what's going on in here Taking just a second to load here. So there's your data center. and your cluster. I'm going to close this error. And then your three lab host. So the, the vCenter environment is now up and ready um, for you to start practicing labs. So for labs, besides the vCenter client and the web client, you may need command line access to some of your, um, some of your host or other uh, VMs within the Autolab environment. Um, the developers of Autolab have made this very easy from the vCenter desktop. Uh, PuTTY is already installed, and they've also already pre-populated the sessions with sessions to different uh, VMs within the Autolab environment. Um, so it makes it real easy to just uh, get to a, a host 
or the NAS or one of the other VMs that you may need access to um, right from the desktop of vCenter. Uh, just a handy little piece that the, the guys that put Autolab together added to make it a little easier. Um, so you'll see there I am on one of I am on host one or ESXi host one and able to um, access the command line. So in this video we've covered uh, starting up the vCenter VM for Autolab and not letting it go through its automated install process and covered a little bit of, about what it does um, through that process. Uh, the vCenter build is very easy. It's, it's pretty much hands off. You start it up, it boots from the um, ISO and then runs through its automation scripts to, to set itself up and if you've configured the automate.ini file on the build share to automatically add your host to inventory and configure them then all of that gets done through through that process of the vCenter build. Um, once the vCenter build is complete uh, the environment is is pretty much ready for you to start working um, in your lab uh, testing um, and getting familiar with the different things you can do within the vSphere environment and you can do this from both the fit client or from the vSphere web client. Um, hope you found this video helpful. Ne the next video in the series I am going to install the VMA uh, into the uh, Autolab lab environment. Um, the VMA, the virtual management assistant, which is a uh, virtual machine or virtual appliance that you can import into the environment to allow you to do uh, remote command line access to your um, host in your environment. Um, it'll be a big help for you especially if you're looking to practice for um, the VCAP DCA exams because there are a number of things, a number of different uh, lab exercises that you can perform from the VMA to help hone your skills using the command line. So look for that video in the next week or so. Hope you enjoyed this video. Visit me at www.vhersey.com or follow me on Twitter at HerseyC.